Welcome to the African Weekly Roundup, a weekly program every Sunday here on Hot for the Media, where I discuss the latest news and events across the African continent. I'm Sultan Mohammed, your host and producer here on Hot for the Media. We hope you find this program very informative. Please like, share, and for similar content, do subscribe to Hot for the Media. Also, do subscribe to Hot for the Media Group's second channel, known as Hot for the TV, where you are currently watching this program, and where you can find other exclusive programs such as Behind the Scenes and Mahahisel, among others. And last but not least. Do you follow myself, Sultan Mohammed, Suleiman Hashi, Yasin Abdi, and the wider for the media team on our social media platforms that should appear on the screen any moment? Now, let's get straight into the headlines and we kick off in West Africa, where voters in the country of Benin went to the polls on Sunday for a parliamentary election seen as a test of democracy, as opposition parties are back on the ballot after boycotting or being excluded from the most recent presidential and legislative votes. Now, Benin's image as a bastion of democracy and stability in West Africa has been been dented on the president Patrice Talon, who went back on a pledge not to run for another term and oversaw an opposition crackdown since coming to power in 2016. Now, seven parties are competing for 109 parliamentary seats in Sunday's vote, including Democrats' party linked to Talon's predecessor and rival Thomas Boniyai. Now, Boniyai's supporters led protests in 2019 after opposition parties were blocked from legislative vote for failing to meet strict new election criteria. Polish stations were quiet in the commercial capital on Sunday morning and there was no sign of unrest. Now, preliminary results are expected on January 11th and may be an indicator of the strength of the political forces jostling to succeed Talon. The next presidential election is due in 2026, when the next parliamentary vote will also be held. Now, Talon does not belong to any party, but is supported by two parties currently in power in parliament, the Bloc Republican and the Union Progressed. Now, there was no immediate sign the vote will see protests like in 2019 and those that broke out in 2021 against Talon's decision to seek re-election, according to political analysts in the country. Now, with more parties on the ballot, turnout should return to normal levels of around 60% after slumping to just 27% in 2019. Under Talon, political protests have been met with deadly police violence, while politicized prosecutions and other legal tactics have been used to stifle the opposition, US Democracy Watchdog Freedom House said in its 2022 report. Now, Talon has denied targeting political opponents or violating human rights. Benin's agricultural dependent economy has been rebounded since the coronavirus pandemic, growing over 7% in 2021 and the first half of 2022. But the country of 12 million remains one of the poorest in the world. A fifth of population lives on less than $1.9 per day, the World Bank data show. Now, regional security may be high up voters' concerns in this election as Benin, alongside neighboring Togo and Ivory Coast, has seen increasing attacks from militants linked to Al-Qaeda and Islamic State as violence creeps south from the Sahel countries of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Now, over to neighboring Mali, where Mali's military president has pardoned 49 Ivorian soldiers arrested in July and accused of conspiring against the Mali Malian government, the president said in a statement on Friday. The soldiers' arrests sparked a diplomatic dispute between Mali and neighboring Ivory Coast and widespread condemnation from regional leaders against a country already at odds with the international community. They were arrested at an airport in Mali's capital Bamako last July. A Malian authorities said the troops were acting as mercenaries, while Ivory Coast said they were part of a United Nations peacekeeping mission in Mali. Now, three women who were soldiers were later released, while the remaining 46 were sentenced to 20 years imprisonment on December 30th last year for attempting to undermine state security, according to the courts. Now, the three released women were sentenced to death in absentia. Now, the president of Mali granted pardon and fully revoked the sentence of 49 Ivorian soldiers, the government spokesman said in a statement. This gesture demonstrates once again Mali's attachment to peace, dialogue, and pan Africanism. It continued. And the 46 Ivorian soldiers flew home to Ivory Coast's capital on Saturday after around six months in the captivity they were in. Their return could signal resolution of a diplomatic standoff between the West African neighbors that also worsened Mali's already tense relations with the regional powers, particularly ECOWAS. Emerging from the plane, each soldier held a small Ivorian flag and smiled as he shook hands with the Ivorian president who was waiting to greet them at the airport. Now that this crisis is behind us, we can resume normal relations with the brother country of Mali, the president of the Ivory Coast said, once they were all on Ivorian soil. Now over to Senegal, where at least 40 people have been killed and 87 others injured after two buses collided near Kafrine in central Senegal. Now, in a response to the grave accident, President Macky Sall announced three days of national mourning beginning on Monday. In a tweet on Sunday, he also said there had been 40 deaths and many more injured. I'm deeply saddened by the tragic road accident, he said on Twitter. I extend my heartfelt condolences to the families of the victims and wish a speedy recovery to the injured. 
by Colonel Sheikh Fall, who is in charge of operations for the West African country's National Fire Brigade, had earlier told AFP News that 38 people had died and 87 were injured in an accident. Now, the accident took place around 3.15 a.m. local time Sunday morning, adding that all victims have been evacuated to a hospital and medical center in Kafrin. The wreckage and demolished buses have since been cleared and normal traffic has already resumed on the road, he said. The governor and local officials have already visited the scene, he added. Now, President Sal said after the period of national mourning finished, a government council will be held to take firm measures on road safety. Road accidents are common in Senegal, largely because of driver indiscipline, poor roads and decrepit vehicles, says experts. However, this is one of the heaviest death tolls from a single accident in recent years. In October 2020, at least 16 people were killed and 15 more injured when a bus collided with a refrigerated lorry in western Senegal. The bus, with a 60-seat capacity, was heading to Rousseau, near the border with Mauritania, the fire brigade added, saying that the number of people abroad on board was unknown. Now, local media said at the time the truck was hauling fish to Dakar. Now over to the Horn of Africa in Somalia, where riots in the northern city of Las Arnaud resulted in the autonomous region of Somaliland in northern Somalia to use lethal force against rock-throwing civilians, which resulted in over 20 deaths. Protests began when a prominent local politician, Abdul Fatah Abdullah Hadrawi, was shot and killed by unknown assailants that fled the scene. Hadrawi's murder is one of over 100 assassinations in the city of prominent figures since the takeover of the town by Somaliland forces in 2007. The latest shooting sparked protests across the city, which resulted in dozens of unarmed civilians blocking the roads and throwing rocks at public buildings. Now, according to protesters, many were infuriated by the lack of investigation by the autonomous Somaliland authorities. Now, aside from the objections to the killings, many protesters were waving the Somali national flag, signaling rejection of the continuity within the self-proclaimed Somaliland state, which seeks to gain independence from Somali republics since the early 90s. Now, Somaliland's aggressive response to the protests shocked many Somalis across the country and across the globe. Within the first 32 hours, Somaliland security forces killed five civilians in the city while shooting indis indiscriminately against protesters. By the end of the brutal crackdown, over 22 people were killed, and authorities shut down telecommunication, internet, water, and electricity services for over nearly three, four days, with more than 180 people being arrested at the city. And the situation was uneasy by Thursday when local resistance, militia, by the population, forced Somaliland security forces out of the town. One resident described that situation as unpredictable, adding that Somaliland military is still active in the city. Now, many are fleeing this morning due to the possibility of further clashes. Residents confirmed that there were skirmishes on Wednesday night as well. It's not immediately clear how many people were killed or injured in the latest clash, but Las Arnold Mayor told the press that there were no immediate casualties, whereas local residents reported up to five people being killed. According to local reports, the recent flare-up began on Wednesday after Somaliland soldiers shot and killed a young man named Mahmoud Ali Sadle, a prominent businessman. As a result, militia from the slain man's clan attacked the Somaliland's regional army bases in the city. Now, militia commanders who took over the town threatened to burn down telecommunication firms if they sought to continue shutting down internet, telecommunication and telephone services. On Tuesday, the president of the autonomous Somaliland region, Musa Bihi Abdi, said that his government is committed to finding a solution to the week-long anti-government protests. On the latest developments on Sunday, clan elders and leaders from the region released a statement calling on all Somaliland forces to leave the Seoul region immediately. However, there has been no immediate response from Hargeisa. And that is the top stories on our program today. Thank you for joining us here on the African Weekly Roundup. Please tune in next week for the top headlines across the African continent.